side-by-side -side competition today in the Silverdome. First, though, we've got to set the field, and we'll do that in qualifying as Jackie Wilman brings Torres onto the track to set down the first time. Wow, did he bang it at the end of the run. Jackie Wilman and the Torres GMC laying down a shot. Let's watch him again as he hits the cars, and look at the air Torres gets here. Wow. Jackie Wilman laying down a time in Torres, and that time is going to be a tough one to beat at 12.87 for Jackie Wilman and the Taurus GMC. Boy, what a great run. And this is a very, very tough and tricky course in Pontiac, Michigan, because it goes from so many different changes in surface. You'll go from dirt to concrete, back to dirt, to a hill, to cars, concrete intermixed. It is a tough course, and now we'll see Kurt Fisher try it. Kurt in the micro machine, the Green Boys machine out of Jefferson City, Missouri. The Micro Machine makes the turn. Oh, Fisher has problems on the turn. And just as we talked about, this is a very tricky course. This is going to cost the Micro Machine a lot of time. Fisher rolls the hill, and now he'll try to hit it hard. But he won't make up a whole lot of time at the end. Kurt Fisher's Micro Machine. Again, you can see once he finally got turned and rolled the hill, he tried to hammer it and make up a little ground at the end. But certainly the time is going to be very, very slow for Kurt Fisher. However, he'll be the first to tell you the main thing is to make the field. And the Micro Machines has done that with a time of 19.06. The legendary Bigfoot Ford is next up out of St. Louis, Missouri. Here is Andy Brass, ready to try and beat Taurus's time. And certainly in a lot of U.S. Hot Rod events, Bigfoot and Taurus have waged quite a war, quite a rivalry, and Brass would love to best his time right here. So Bigfoot next to go on the clock. Whoa, look at that front wheel come up, but he's okay, a good turn. Now Bigfoot will try to take it out well. A lot of air for Andy Brass as Bigfoot shuts her down, but did he get quick enough to beat Torres? We'll find out. Let's watch the replay, and again, you'll see the unique suspension, the state-of-the-art design, the cantilever suspension of the Bigfoot Ford, and how each wheel reacts differently when it comes down. Then watch when he goes to the brakes, how the front end really drops down. He did evil fourth, and Ray Pokarski from Florissant, Missouri. Well, that wrecker kind of made the turn, and here comes the big Ford for home. Man, look at the air underneath Evil Force. That's one of the heaviest trucks in monster truck racing. Ray Forkowski. Let's watch it again on the replay. Here he comes, and he's got that Ford with that wrecker arm on the back of it off the hill. And when he hits the cars, he really gets them there. Look at how high Evil Force is. He's not like some of the lighter trucks to get a lot of weight on this truck. And a 15.12, not a bad run at all for Evil Force. It certainly puts him safely into the field here at the Pontiac Silverdome. With a couple of fans get a laugh. First Blood will be next out. This is Rob Fuse out of Woodstock, Illinois, and another Ford having a super year in U.S. Hot Rod Race. The critical turn hits that concrete. He kind of slides a little bit, but he's still in control. Little problem with the hill cost him some momentum, and so he didn't hit the cars as well as I know he wanted to. That probably cost him some time. There it is right there. His nose was down, and he got a bounce off that hill. Thus, not enough momentum to really get over those cars. You can see he only hit about three cars in, and I know Rob's going to be a little disappointed with that run. But again, in qualifying, if you're going to make a mistake, for is 12.87. Here comes Whiskey Business, and this is Ken Deppy. Makes the turn. Deppy and Whiskey Business traditionally run these turning courses very well. But I don't think on this run he did anything to challenge Torres' fast qualification time. Let's watch it again. As you can see, he has trouble with the hill. He kind of gets off sideways, I guess, on the hill. And then when he comes to hit the cars, he's not completely square. A good run, nonetheless, for Ken Deppie and Whiskey Business. And should put him up there decent qualifying right in the middle of the pack at 15.40. Well, here's Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher, another of the state-of-the-art trucks with the cantilever suspension and uh, all the extra shocks, all the suspension travel that allows him to settle that truck down to really take the hard hit. And not only does the truck handle it better, it's much easier on the driver. At least the drivers will tell you that these kind of suspensions and the way they react to the bumps take a much easier toll, much less of a toll, on the driver themselves. Boy, Porter's in trouble. He seemed to completely lose power in between the hill and the cars, and that is a run I'm sure he's not happy with at all. Gary Porter and the popular Carolina Crusher in some trouble right there between the hill and the cars, and again, had no momentum when he got to the cars, and that really cost him in terms of the time. Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher coming in on that run with a time of 18. The art truck, here's one of the old guards, the original Mad Dog. 
the Breen Boys out of Jefferson City, Missouri. John Breen and the Mad Dog Chevrolet, one of the first Chevy Monster trucks ever. Look at him dance around that turn. Hold on, John. Again, the Mad Dog had a lot of trouble with the turn. Let's see if he can get her straightened out and finish the run. Boy, the Mad Dog Chevrolet, and I'll tell you, this is really a testament to where the new trucks are in opposed to an older truck like Mad Dog. This truck was built a lot more for straight line racing than trying to make turns, and indeed, that turn cost Mad Dog severely. It figures to be the slowest time of this qualification round, and that certainly means he'll have a tougher draw in the first round of side-by-side -side racing. Again on the replay, Mad Dog comes up, gets some air, and hits that stack of cars, but by then, he had lost so much time in the turn that he was going to be destined to the worst qualifying run of them all. Nonetheless, Mad Dog is qualified for the field. Total. The Mad Dog stable fields both the Whiskey Business and Mad Dog Racing Truck. That should be an interesting battle for bragging rights at home. First up, though, this is a main event matchup right here. The Taurus GMC and the First Blood Ford. It's First Blood. Rob Fuse out of Woodstock, Illinois. Taurus is Jackie Wilman from Granite City, Illinois. And they are ready to go. The winner moves on. The loser puts it on the trailer. First Blood makes the turn, but Taurus has got the lead. Taurus is actually putting him away. We'll show you the end of the run for First Blood. He gets in the air and completes it successfully, but Taurus is able to grab the victory. Jackie Wilman out of Granite City, Illinois, beats Rob Fuchs and the First Blood Ford. Here on the replay, you can see how Taurus comes over the hill. He's got about a six-truck length lead at that point, and Jackie Wilman airs it out, completely goes over the cars, and lands on the other side of the dirt pile. Wow, what a run for Taurus, and he is going to be hard to hold tonight in the Silver Dome. Micro Machine and Evil Force set to go. Evil Force again is Ray Porkowski out of Florescent, Missouri. If, as we mentioned earlier, this is one of the heavier trucks. Micro Machine, one of the newer trucks on the circuit. Kurt Fisher out of Missouri. The big advantage of the turn is the Micro Machine, but now Evil Force is making up ground. And Micro Machine in a little trouble, had to get on the binders. Evil Force has the lead coming to the cars. He's got the win and he also takes out the finish line. Wow! Evil Force goes right through the poles that hold up the finish tape. Nonetheless, the victory will go to Ray Porkowski and Evil Force. Let's watch the end of that run again. And look, he gets a little bit cockeyed, and bang, here he comes for the finish poles. And guess what? They lose. The monster truck comes through. Evil Force gets the victory. Now the Carolina Crusher will come out to take on Bigfoot. Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, and the Carolina Crusher Chevrolet. Now these two trucks, Bigfoot with Andy Brass and Carolina Crusher with Gary Porter, have very, very similar chassis designs, very similar in the shock setup, in their suspension travel. So let's see who's able to get the victory in this matchup of state-of-the-art machines. Bigfoot with a big edge to the turn. And coming for home, it is all Bigfoot. Andy Brass lets it out the back end, and the win goes to the Bigfoot Ford out of St. Louis, Missouri, grabbing the victory again on the replay. Here comes Bigfoot over the hill, and you can see Andy Brass Put the hammer down and take it right into your living room. Bigfoot gets the win over Carolina Crusher. So Foot will advance now into the semifinal round of competition. Taurus and Evil Force are already there. And one more truck will make it. It'll either be the Mad Dog Chevrolet or the Whiskey Business Chevrolet. There's John Breen ready to go to work in Mad Dog with a thumbs up. Head to head against Ken Jeffy and Whiskey Business against both these trucks out of the Breen Boy stable in Jefferson City, Missouri. Team bragging rights looks like they're going to Whiskey Business as he heads for the turn. Ken Deppie's in good shape, rolls the hill, and he ought to have enough left for the ending. Indeed, it's an easy victory for Ken Deppie and the Whiskey Business Chevrolet as Mad Dog just now completes the run with John Breen behind the wheel. Again on the replay, Ken Deppie in good shape, straight to the cars, wheels pretty squared up on the final set as he hits the cars gets up in the air and goes on to victory, where he'll advance into the semifinal round of monster truck competition from the Pontiac Silver Dome. So we've completed one round with Taurus beating first blood. He'll meet Bigfoot next after Bigfoot dispatched Carolina Crusher. The other half of the bracket will find Evil Force coming back into competition. Evil Force beat Micro Machine, so now he'll go up against Whiskey Business, the victor over Mad Dog. On to the track. Very popular young driver, and he certainly has a super fast truck. But not only is the truck fast, this guy is not afraid to flat drive it on the edge. Certainly the young superstar in this sport, Jackie Wilman and Torres going up against Ray Polkowski and Evil Force. And look at Torres come out of the hole. Beautiful turn. Now Polkowski and Evil Force, but he's got too much ground to make up. Torres is putting away the Evil Force right there. Jackie Wilman with the win. And Torres will advance to the Monster Smash Final, the GMC will come back to try and grab the victory a little later. On the replay, you can see him when he hits the cars. Torres with a lot of air. He hits a little hard, but Jackie Wilman able to keep her under control 
give the victory to Jackie Wilman and Forrest. Well, we kind of got things a little bit torn up at the end of the track there again. As Evil Force got a little bit off course on us that time. We'll get him straightened back out and get ready to go now with Whiskey Business against Bigfoot. Bigfoot, the big Ford out of St. Louis. Andy Brass behind the wheel. Ken Deppie will drive the Whiskey Business Chevrolet out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Almost a wheel stand at the start for Bigfoot. Brass coming up with a lot of momentum. Whiskey Business makes the turn in good shape, though. They're pretty even as they come off the hill. Bigfoot takes the victory as Deppie's in trouble at the end of the run. Ken Deppie was in this thing until he got to the cars but lost it. Heading up the ramp to the cars, and Andy Brass soars to victory. Here it is on the replay. Watch the big blue Ford hit the cars and explode into the monster truck final, where he will go head-to-head -head with Taurus. You talk about your main event in Lewis, Missouri, the Bigfoot Ford and Andy Brass. These two guys have been warring all over the country. Wherever the U.S. Hot Rod Association goes, you can bet Taurus and Bigfoot are going to be near the head of the pack. And when they go side by side, it is truly one of the most exciting matchups in monster truck racing. And here it is for all the marbles. Even going into the turn. They're still even. It's going to be decided on the final set of cards. Oh, I, I can't tell who won it. Bigfoot's in trouble. Into the wall. The Bigfoot Ford has smashed into the wall of the Pontiac Silverdome. But did he do it in victory or in defeat? We still have not determined. Look at this isolated replay on the Bigfoot board. Brass got in trouble as the back end flipped way up, and then when it came down, it sent him flying. He almost went end over end, does a great job to save the truck, but bang, into the wall of the Pontiac Silverdome. In the other lane, Jackie Wilman in the Taurus GMC came off the hill way too high, and it cost him a little bit of time. Then he tried to hammer it out the other end. He, too, almost got in trouble. Did you see the nose of the truck almost kiss the concrete? Incredible. We're going to get another replay, and this angle should show us who got the victory. Watch for the finish line, and indeed, there it is, your winner in the far lane.